What's going on guys? Quick video for you here this morning. I want to show you how to use PowerShell to interact with text files. You can do things like count the lines in a text file. Um, you can find out how many occurrences there are of specific strings or parts of strings. You can clean up the text file by uh, using the trim command. We can output the modified version to a new text file. There's tons of things that you can do. You can split it into multiple files. I'll just show you a few here and show you how to get started with PowerShell when it comes to uh, interacting with text files. This can be extremely handy if you have a very large file that you need to either produce a report on. Maybe your boss needs to know how many times this data shows up in a text file, how, large, how many lines. Um, you know, you can get creative with your ideas here, but I guarantee you if you're working with text files for any amount of time and you have a large amount of data this will eventually come in handy for you so let's go ahead and get started first thing you want to do is declare a variable to point to the text file that we're going to be working with we'll just use a single file here today you can obviously get creative use multiple files um, maybe we'll do another video where we throw those into an array list and then we can perform functions against the whole array list of files but today keeping it rather simple with a single text file so I just created a test file here on my documents folder. Test doc one dot text, super creative. And file is the variable that I created. So if you're not familiar with variables, you just um, put a dollar sign and then the name of the variable that you want to come up with. Use whatever name you want. Again, I got super creative and use file. So then the next thing you want to do is get the contents of that file. So we declared the variable for the file. Now we need to say another, create another variable for contents. Again, you can call it whatever you want, but I'm just keeping it simple here for demonstration purposes. So the variable contents equals get content of file. Get content is a built-in function in PowerShell that will read the contents of a text file. So to verify that, we could echo contents to the screen and it should give us the um, text or the strings that are included in this text file. And it does. So this is the test file that I created. And you see we've got some leading white space, some trailing white space. Um, we've got some explanation points. I'll show you how to clean those up. So let's get rid of that. So if we wanted to clean up those uh, that white space, PowerShell actually has a built-in function called trim. And natively, if you don't pass it any parameters, trim will clean up uh, your preceding and trailing white space. So if you have space at the beginning of lines or at the end of lines that you need to get rid of, sometimes when you're scripting things or passing things into a uh, data integration system or an interface, you need to have things formatted very specifically or else it'll break the data flow. And sometimes, one of those things is like a carriage return or white space that can actually throw off the whole uh, data flow. So we'll show you how to pass that um, command to PowerShell here. So what we'll do is we'll create another variable. We'll say trimmed equals contents dot trim. And if you just wanna do white space, just two brackets here, just open bracket, close bracket. And then we can echo trimmed and see what that looks like. So as you see, we got rid of all the white space in the beginning and all the white space at the end. This did not modify the text file. So if I were to echo contents again, right after trimmed, we should see that the original file is still intact the way it was. Yes. So all we did here was create a variable that stored the trimmed version of that file in memory. So if we wanted to take that file and spit it out to a new file, I'll show you how to do that in a second. I want to show you one more way to um, trim a file. So again, by default, we're only getting rid of the white space. But let's say you wanted to get, or you needed to get more creative. We're going to say trim two here. You wanted to get more creative and you wanted to get rid of, um, let's say like our file has explanation points in a couple of these. So let's get rid of those trailing explanation points. And again, use your imagination here, guys. You could literally do this for anything. Uh, we're gonna say dot trim, and this time we're gonna specify a string. 
So an exclamation point. And we're going to trim to that already trimmed version. So we called it trim two, right? So we're trimming the trimmed version and we're trimming off the explanation points. So this should yield ultimately a file that has no preceding or trailing white space and no explanation, no uh, preceding or trailing explanation points. So let's go ahead and prove that by doing trim two. And as you see, we have no more preceding white space, no more trailing white space, and then we got rid of those explanation points as well, guys. So if you wanted to take that, um, well, let me show you one more thing. This is obviously very simple to do manually, but if you had a massive text file, you could count it really simply. So we could just do trim2.count, and that'll tell you how many lines are in that file. Five lines. But again, obviously, if you had a massive document, not so easy to count it manually. There's other ways to count it, but there's uh, other times that'll come in handy. Let's say you wanted to know how many times a specific phrase or a string, you come up with an idea. Um, you could throw that into an array list or pop that out to a new text file, and then you could count that, and you'd be able to tell your boss very quickly, this is how many times that data is present in the file. Um, there's real world situ situations or circumstances where that comes up more often than you might think. And this is a quick way to turn around that information to whoever's asking for it. So let's, uh, final step here, I'll keep it kind of short. Let's show you how to um, export this to a new file. So yeah, it's nice that you have went ahead and cleaned it all up, but again, it's only stored as a variable. So let's take trim two and then we'll pipe that out to, I've created a new file already, um, blank file, users, documents, I think it was just new file, or trimmed file, I think it was, we'll see, trim file dot text, it should tell us if it doesn't exist, let's play that. No, let me find the right name for that file that I prepped here. Trimmed file dot text. Oh, got to have the whole path here, guys. That would help. All right, there we go. Let's try that again. There we go. So we should have the results of that um, trim to variable where we took out all the white space and then we removed the characters that we told it to remove from the trailing or the beginning or the end of each line. And let me show you that. I'll have to change views in OBS. I'll open up this document. Give me one second, I'll change the view. All right guys, and there is that trimmed file, that text. As you see, no explanation points and no white space, no leading or trailing white space. Let's just compare that to our original document that we were working with here. And that was test doc. So this is the file that we originally fed to PowerShell. You'll see there is uh, some leading white space, some trailing white space, and then these exclamation points. So we walked through couple easy steps to clean that up and then output that to a new file. Again, guys, this is a introduction. I want to make sure that you guys are comfortable. Hopefully this will help you dip your toe in the water as far as interacting with PowerShell when it comes to um, interacting with text documents. This is a very powerful way to become more efficient with modifying um, gathering data or reporting from text files. Don't go at it without a tool. PowerShell is a very powerful built-in tool to Windows, and this is just scratching the surface. So if you guys would like to see something more specific as far as PowerShell and text files, go ahead and drop a comment down there. I'd be happy to help you out. Um, yeah, I think on the next one, maybe we'll take a look at ArrayList. Appreciate you tuning in. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Until the next one, take care, guys.